All righty. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. And uh, thanks so much for taking part in, in this webinar. Uh, before starting this webinar, uh, let's check that the audio and the video is working properly. Could you please uh, raise your hands to confirm? Okay. Okay, also it is important to, to say that you can start using the, the chat feature to throw your questions for our guest speaker. And I will try to handle it along the way. Okay. Okay, good. So let's start then. I'm, I'm Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startups Common uh, Global. And uh, today uh, we are hosting this webinar as part of a, a longer webinar series towards uh, building the world's first open standards-based best practices library uh, to support ecosystem builders and, and operators globally in their efforts to support entrepreneurship, startups, and innovation in, in general. Um, we are starting this, this webinar series with Michael Ambion, uh, Managing Director at Urban Tech. I met with Michael for first time during his last, uh, last year, and uh, I got to know the amazing things that he and his team are doing towards accelerating the development of sustainable cities. Michael, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Oscar. And great to be here. And uh, we'll do our best to make this uh, both brief uh, and useful and uh, interactive. And as Oscar already mentioned, there's a little chat box. And we encourage you to, uh, to uh, add questions as, as we go along. And we'll try and get to all of them. Um, in fact, there's both a chat and a Q&A feature, um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make uh, sure that we, we try and use all of these tools. So uh, I can see um, uh, quite a few people joined already. It's fantastic to see you all here. Uh, and it looks, um, based from, on the names, like we have at least somebody from Finland and somebody from uh, Spain and all over the place. So that's super exciting uh, to have a global community. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and do my best to see if I can share my screen very briefly. Um, I'm going to do this here. And then if I hit the pre present button um, somewhere irrelevant like there, then hopefully you can see the whole screen. I'm crossing fingers here. Yes. Um, does that work, Oscar? Yes, it's working. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Well, um, as Oscar mentioned, my name is Michael, Michael Ambion. I'm uh, from Urban Tech. I'm just one of uh, a whole team of people. Uh, we've got uh, Corina, Delin, Hanna, Caroline, uh, and a whole bunch of other people working on uh, basically accelerating the development of uh, sustainable cities. And today we'll look at some of the uh, tools and methods that we use uh, in order to, to drive that change and also how we are inspired uh, by the, uh, the frameworks that are available through uh, startup companies. Um, I want to have, uh, look back at a, a different time. It seems like years ago now already, where we had a couple of hundred people in the big hall at the Danish Architecture Center to celebrate our most recent demo day. Uh, you can see people are standing with less than two meters in between them. That's because that was a different time. It was before we had imagined what the world uh, looks like today. But it is uh, it was a big day uh, and one we, we look forward to repeating this year, although the format, as you can imagine, might be a little bit different. But I want to tell the, the story of how we ended up uh, standing on the stage together and uh, some of the things that we uh, helped um, basically uh, the startups with specifically, uh, basically our core theory of change and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, this is an example of some of, of the, the startups and we'll, we'll share a couple of stories as well of, of some of the ones that uh, uh, went through the program. And also we'll talk a little bit about what we are hoping to do in uh, 2020, including uh, whether there might be an opportunity for, for your startup to, to participate. So you may be familiar with uh, this uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, framework from uh, Startup Commons. Um, so to, to help uh, you see where we fit on this as an accelerator, we are towards the, 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 the side of that. So uh, not so much about the ideating and, and concepting, we, we generally, uh, are best uh, set out to really help um, people find product market fits and ultimately uh, get them to, uh, to into uh, the path uh, to scale. 
in the first year that we ran the uh, accelerator, we cast the net a little bit more widely, but this year we, we're going to focus even more in on basically uh, the, the, the scaling elements. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about a couple of examples uh, from, from both sides, so to speak. Um, this uh, is my uh, humble attempt with uh, the team to uh, type into the wonderful templates uh, from uh, Startup Commons to, to help uh, basically uh, set out um, what it is uh, that we offer. Uh, and it's actually a good uh, opportunity for, for reflection. Um, and I would encourage you, if you're running an accelerator program, to, to participate in this uh, knowledge sharing, uh, because it means that you uh, might be able to uh, find ideas from uh, that, that work particularly well uh, from others, and also, of course, uh, share your good practice, uh, which is a, a thing that we, we need now more than ever. Um, if we look at the, the service itself, basically, what, what are the KPIs? There's quite a lot. Uh, we, we haven't uh, organized them all uh, completely in the level of which ones are the most important, right? If you have this many, some of them will be more important than others, but it gives you a little bit of a taste of, of some of the things that we uh, think about and we work on as we try and, and uh, impact uh, the startups. Um, let's see somebody coming up with a question here just quickly. Ah, oh, it was me, it was that me. That was you, that's fine. This is teamwork in action, excellent, all right. So, uh, but you, yeah. So, if you have questions about these, uh, don't don't hesitate uh, to to ask. If I want to um, really draw your attention to one key thing, though, then it is uh, in our service-related KPIs. Uh, there's basically the first one: a thirty startups will be helped to improve their business um, and their business model, and that's across three years. We do ten startups a year, and really that is the core of our theory of change. That if we help those pilots work, then we will most likely be able to drag all the other activities along. Um, that is the most important thing for us, uh, which is quite apt because indeed we are an accelerator. We are also tied into the overall discussion around uh, sustainability, um, which is uh, our tagline is accelerating the development of sustainable cities. And, and within that, there are three SDGs that are the most relevant for us. Uh, industry, innovation, infrastructure. Uh, so our three partners, I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But they, they kind of sit across uh, 9 and 11. Uh, so uh, they are uh, a utility and a consulting engineering firm and uh, a holding firm or holding company that, are, amongst other things, owns uh, Vlux, uh, which is the, the overlight window uh, company that provides fresh air and, of course, daylight into to homes. And all of that bringing together to ultimately be a partnership effort, just like we're participating uh, today as, as part of our partnership uh, objectives. Now, what, what is it, um, back to that uh, point I made before, that A, objective A, was the most important? Well, it's the, the pilot bits that really makes uh, the difference. And uh, uh, as the saying goes, uh, use cases are made in PowerPoint, but pilots are made in real life. Uh, so sometimes, uh, uh, what's it called, those pilots are best done with, with large organizations, uh, corporates. Uh, you could think of them as super tankers, but actually in our experience, sometimes it ends up being uh, the startups uh, that feel a little bit like the super tanker when they basically uh, meet the market and realize that actually they will have to pivot and do something quite different. And then they uh, enviously look onto the corporates that go past in the speedboat and vice versa. Either way, um, in case you're wondering where urban tech sits, we are with these sort of super glamorous little pilot boats there in between the two trying to help guide things uh, along um, uh, with a, a, a team engaging uh, with, with these startups from around the world. Now let's look at the, some of the results. Uh, I'm not gonna take you through all of them. I've just picked a couple that I uh, particularly like. Uh, one uh, here, uh, which is that uh, the, the startups really have uh, helped uh, uh, or gotten an improved understanding of the market in, in Denmark, the market potential and that again fits uh, in the sort of common framework around fit and finding both market fit and market potential, of course. Um, they also have increased uh, interest in doing business in Denmark. And in that context, of course, it's worth noting that Denmark is, according to the World Bank at least, one of the top five countries in the world to, to do business in. Um, we are based out of a physical space. It's a little bit um, uh, empty at the moment, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it is a quite large space that so it actually lends itself to, to keeping some distance uh, in between people. And what we found is that uh, our startups also really value the ability to come in and, uh, and basically uh, uh, spend some time in a place uh, where there's a broader uh, ecosystem of, of, uh, of uh, organizations that operate in the built environment uh, space. 
Also, uh, really important to us, um, as I mentioned, it was our pilot year. So only 90% of our startups uh, managed to uh, enhance their value proposition. Uh, I'm fairly confident that we can improve on that uh, in, uh, in year two. And even then, uh, that was a very uh, strong result uh, in line uh, with uh, what you could expect from, from the first run of something. And then uh, let's just talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the partners here. So Kubi, uh, I mentioned briefly, the consulting engineers, VKI is the holding company for Velux, and EV is a really interesting utility uh, that provides both uh, broadband uh, and uh, they also provide electricity and, and water. And then we have two philanthropic organizations, uh, Justine's Fund, and then uh, Valdania. Uh, Valdania, if you are involved with C40, for example, um, which I guess you could call an ecosystem player for cities, uh, then um, they, they're very heavily involved and, and were part of the organizers uh, when they took place in, in Copenhagen last year. Um, people flew in from, from all over the world. Um, I want to go back to the, the pilots though, because that is the core of our theory of change. It's the ability to, to do things uh, where we basically bring a startup in with a large organization and have them try something out at scale. In order to do that, we uh, draw on, on champs from these last organizations, and 17, in fact, and we've got a couple uh, here. So we've got Tyler Mersch, PhD, is one of our uh, sort of rock stars in that, uh, uh, basically uh, helping uh, uh, a startup in, in a very practical sense understand how to both interface but also try out the technology um, uh, at, at, at scale. The other uh, set of partners that we have that are worth mentioning, and again, this ties into to the importance of the ecosystem, so blocks up our hint to that, that's kind of our home where we live, uh, but also uh, uh, an infrastructure that we draw on uh, in order to, to meet and interact with, with other partners in the space. We draw on the Danish Design Center for uh, training in strategic use of design, the Danish Architecture Center to, in order to um, uh, basically do a public engagement more broadly. Uh, and then uh, of course also they, they're the host of, uh, or they, at least the location for our, our big demo day. They have a beautiful hall with a view onto to, uh, to the harbor. And then um, each uh, startup that participates in our program gets 100 grand in uh, credit from, from uh, uh, Amazon to, so that they can also try things out in, in practice without incurring massive extra costs. Now, going back to the ecosystem element in, in year one, we also drew on, on 35 mentors that came in and supported the startups. And they came on, come from all sorts of backgrounds. Uh, here you can see Holy, um, uh, who has a st uh, strong background as a, a product manager and um, uh, has a, a very strong uh, experience of working with sustainability. So helping the startups thinking about uh, the, the issues uh, when, when trying to get a, a, a pilot to run, not just uh, commercially viable, but also sustainably uh, viable. And during the time that we, we spent together, we, we did lots and lots of those, uh, things together. There's uh, quite a few numbers here, uh, but the, the key thing uh, I wanna highlight here actually is in the background. Um, the value of bringing people together and, and helping them really think about their users and how to uh, more strategically engage. And of course, this year now, uh, we are thinking about how we can then adapt that to, to potentially a, a virtual format. Uh, uh, there are tools uh, that uh, will do the equivalent of a post-it uh, online, but uh, uh, it'll just be a, a different way, but I'm sure we can, we can uh, pull that off. Uh, uh, we've certainly done uh, similar things before. So let's talk about uh, just a couple of very practical stories here. Um, so next, uh, Energy uh, is uh, a startup from California. They came across and, and worked with Velux. And uh, you can see in this uh, graphic here, sort of a slight um, uh, sort of uh, what we call a pattern on the window. And that's basically uh, solar cells. So they can actually generate electricity through windows. Um, uh, so whilst you can still see out and see the, the, the sunlight, uh, they're actually generating electricity and they tried that out uh, and that was very successful. And a very exciting uh, use case. Uh, again, if you think about the fact that Venus windows tend to be overlight, so, so really facing uh, up towards uh, the sun. Uh, and this uh, also helped uh, Next uh, uh, get a better understanding of the North European market and, and potentially uh, think about how they could uh, approach uh, that market more broadly. Another uh, uh, very exciting uh, use case uh, from our pilot uh, was uh, Sarj is a, a very small, uh, uh, what's called Spanish uh, startup. And they basically uh, tried out their technology, um, uh, which is basically uh, called geomechanics, uh, or it's a part of the field of geomechanics. 
and they were able to uh, help uh, Kubi, the consulting engineers, uh, where they were pouring an island uh, near Singapore. Now, pouring an island is uh, uh, something that is quite aggregate and uh, CO2 intensive uh, from a cement and, and uh, concrete point of view. Uh, but by using uh, the technology that Salch has, uh, they were able to basically adjust and fine tune that process to potentially save both aggregate and, and ultimately uh, CO2 uh, as they're trying to, to extend the built environment uh, in, uh, in uh, Singapore. And then uh, a very practical uh, third example, but from, from the other side, basically from the, the corporate side. So here's a, a snapshot from our demo day uh, in the annual report from BKR talking about uh, the, basically the impact they have as an organization and how they're trying to basically stay um, at the front uh, of, of being innovative and, and working with a broader ecosystem of, of, of players. So, Let's, um, uh, I can see there's a question coming in there. We'll, we'll come to that, but just to quickly round off here, um, uh, another element of, uh, of ecosystem uh, interaction uh, that we went on and did uh, further to our last uh, discussion, Oscar, when, when we saw each other at Helsinki, or at, at, at the Slush Ecosystem uh, Developer Summit in, in Helsinki, uh, was a hackathon uh, done at Block Hub, uh, where we basically gathered in tips from uh, people uh, in within the built environment um, uh, that was uh, really uh, both inspiring and, and, and interesting uh, opportunity again to, to mix people up and, and have that mutually supportive uh, setup. And basically if you go to, to urbantechprogram.io uh, then you can, you can find this post fairly easily of actually just probably search for Hack Block Hub 2020. And then uh, another example um, uh, linking back to, to Finland actually uh, of uh, just one of the, the events uh, that we've been doing again from an ecosystem point of view is uh, talking to the Kira Hub, uh, which is a built environment uh, space based out of Maria One in uh, in Helsinki, and so on and so forth. So it's uh, really important for us to be able to to contribute to to these discussions and, and debates, uh, and we really appreciate the, the opportunity to be here today. Um, so. Uh, What's the punchline at the end? Ah, what's the catch? Well, the catch is that we're, we're looking for some startups as well. Uh, 10 growth tech startups, we're looking for an experienced team, we're looking for market-ready solutions, so things that can be tried out with one of these uh, three large organizations, and we're looking for a commitment. Uh, potentially in person, but potentially also uh, virtually. Um, and uh, not to stress anybody, but the deadline is on the 26th of April. But I just want to mention that, just in case uh, there's somebody out there who, who this might be a good fit for. Um, so it is about acceleration the development of sustainable cities. There is still time to, uh, to, to, to apply. Um, and also, maybe I should mention uh, that we do provide uh, a 15,000 euro uh, travel grant, uh, or maybe it will be a virtual working grant, but something along those lines anyway. Uh, and the other thing that's really important is that we do not take equity in, in the startup. So that really brings us back to, to where we started. There's a super fast cancer from a, uh, a demo day last year, how we brought these people together, a quick sidestep to slush, and then uh, really focusing in on basically how, what, what we're doing and, and how we're working uh, around uh, the validating and scaling uh, of, uh, of, of startups. And with that, let's um, try and get to the, the, the Q&A and uh, see what people uh, are curious to, to learn more about. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, Michael. Uh, it was really, really interesting what you are doing. That's why uh, we, we thought that it was really important to, to come here to join us today. So we are getting a few, few questions from, from the attendees. So for example, uh, Pranav is asking about how has COVID been impacting urban tech? Yeah, that's a great question. So the, the, short, the short answer is that um, uh, we, we run the program once a year, we run it in the autumn. Um, so in some ways, um, uh, the impact on our pilot activity hasn't been felt yet, but we, we definitely uh, had to, to rethink our approach, right? Because the, the existing approach uh, probably won't uh, work. Uh, so we, we're thinking about a, a virtual or potentially hybrid between a virtual and, and in-person. But a very, very practical example of, uh, of a direct impact is that uh, normally this time of year we visit uh, a range of cities around the world to, to basically meet face to face with startups to uh, talk to them uh, about the program. Uh, but uh, yeah, Circular uh, Economy Week in New York, for example, uh, we did not uh, have the opportunity to attend as, as we had hoped. Uh, we were hoping to visit Amsterdam, Berlin and so on. 
and instead uh, we have uh, been burning the wire, so to speak, on uh, on Zoom and other platforms, meeting with with startups on a one-to-one -one basis instead. Um, so that that uh, has been an inter interesting uh, ad adaptation, um, but uh, one one that is manageable. It's just a different way of working. Okay, great. Um... Paul, for example, is asking about uh, the processes that you follow up uh, to, to help the startups identify pilot partners. Yeah. So how are you implementing that, that process? So the, the startups, uh, so it's, it's a little bit the other way around. So in order to, to uh, help make sure that we, we are respectful of everybody's time and, and technology and that there's a good fit from the beginning, the way we do it is we, we gather applications from around the world and then with the partners, we sit down and, and then we look at, okay, where might there be a good fit for uh, VLOOX? Uh, for example, what, what are the advanced materials? What's the sensor technology? What is the uh, new ways of uh, doing coatings and so on that, that might be useful for them? Uh, and vice versa with, with the other partners. Um, uh, so, so it's kind of the other way around, so to speak. And then when it comes to to once we've made a match, then we basically start facilitating the, the discussions to make sure that uh, uh, we can make the most of it. Yeah. Okay, good. So we are getting more and more questions. It's, it's, it's great. So, uh, Florte, uh, I was asking about uh, what are the biggest challenges of scaling startups in the field of sustainable urban tech and how do you overcome them? So a big challenge um, is uh, scale, right? So uh, startup might have a fantastic solution that then, you know, that, that can save uh, CO2. It might be able to avoid uh, wastewater. It might be able to um, improve, uh, for example, uh, traffic flow. I'm, I'm from broad, uh, broadcasting from Copenhagen here. So maybe it's bicycle flow through the city. It could be lots of different things. Um, the key challenge that we find that they have is, is the ability to try it out at scale. Uh, and that's why we, we, we bring in these uh, partners that are, are operating um, at significant scale. And then during that pilot process, you can then try something out. Um, and, and the best way to illustrate it is to, to tell some stories. So uh, last year, for example, Mueco, uh, a sensor-based um, startup, uh, with, which also has some uh, uh, blockchain um, uh, uh, expertise, uh, basically work with VLOOX uh, on putting sensors on pallets uh, in their production facility so that they could basically map out the flow of these pallets throughout their supply chain. Um, and that's something that they wouldn't have been able to do without having access to um, uh, multiple uh, facilities. We got another question. Uh, uh, Michael, could you please elaborate mm -hmm. on the common points and difference between urban tech and smart cities in general? Yes, I, I can. I would love to do that. So, uh, because that's a really interesting. Uh, it topic. was not planned. No, it was not planned. No, no, it was not a planned question, but it is an interesting question and one we can yes. come across. So, um, certainly, when 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 we think of of smart city, we often think of uh, basically. Uh, something the size of uh, sidewalk labs trying to, uh, I'm not sure it's taking over is the right term, term, but but Google or another major corporation moving into a city and trying to basically optimize everything all at once. So it's, it's like super large scale, it's super ambitious and so on. And the big players tend to be, uh, for example, yeah, Google, it could be Siemens, it could be uh, others. Um, what we think of, of uh, in, in urban tech is, uh, it being a more modular approach, a more, uh, I would uh, personally say, a little bit more humble and practical and pragmatic approach. And really with the difference that we are not just looking at the efficiency in the city, because efficiency itself uh, is not necessarily the, the aim. Uh, the, ultimately, what we want to do is, is build cities that indeed are, are uh, an, you know, a, a good place to live, basically. Um, uh, so we, we, what, what sometimes missed in the, the smart city discussion is the livability uh, of cities, the fact that they still need to be warm, welcoming places that are basically uh, place uh, the human in the centre uh, and enable people to, to live uh, rich and, and fulfilling lives. That is not just about, uh, you know, ferrying thousands of cars around in better ways. Uh, okay, good. Then uh, Ari is asking about the role 
uh, uh, of the city of Copenhagen or at regional level or even at national level uh, when running uh, this accelerator. So are they providing any type of uh, resources, funding, resources in general? So what's their, their involvement in that sense? Yeah, so, so we, we work with uh, elements of, of the public sector. So for example, Copenhagen Capacity, which is uh, an agency uh, helping foster and encourage uh, both employment and investment into to the greater Copenhagen area, which basically stretches all the way to, to Malmö, which you can see there behind me in, in Sweden. Um, so there is collaboration there. Um, the, the city of Copenhagen, uh, in a direct sense, uh, is not part of the, the the program as part from the fact that they obviously host us in the way that we are uh, in Copenhagen and, and so on. Um, uh, but the core opportunity is still with, with the, the three large organizations. But if, if somebody from the city of Copenhagen is on this call right now and, and would like to talk more, then of course I, I'm, I'm available uh, for, for that discussion. Right. And, and, and I would hasten to add that it, it, it doesn't mean that you can't design a program like this to run with uh, the city as a partner as well. Um, what we have to be bear in mind is that one of our partners uh, is based, um, uh, has his headquarters sort of, I would say way beyond Copenhagen. So we're trying to, to make the most of what is a fantastic city, but also make sure that we're not, uh, as sometimes happens in countries, be uh, capital centric, so to speak, that we also uh, engaging beyond uh, the, the capital city. Right. We also got one anonymous question. Uh, yeah. What makes Urban Tech different compared to other similar accelerators? Sure, well, what makes us uh, different is uh, ultimately the, the focus on uh, the, the pilot, uh, that we really believe that that is an absolute uh, key driver uh, in uh, creating uh, practical uh, stories and examples and proof points for um, uh, sustainable change in cities. And then we support that up with, with a couple of other elements uh, that I hinted at. So one is the, the training and, and basically master classes from the Danish Design Center in how to use design strategically, not just aesthetically. And then uh, we also use uh, some uh, well-seasoned and super experienced uh, 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 what's it called, trainers for solution sales. What we, we often find in, in B2B uh, tech startups uh, in the build environment is that uh, they're often founded by people with an engineering background. They're super smart people, they're super clever. Their technology is uh, both sexy and exciting. And they're often a little bit too focused on the product and not enough focused on, on the commercial side. So that's uh, part of what we help with is, is uh, thinking around how can you turn this into a viable business and find the, the product market fit. Um, and and uh, we wouldn't be able to do that without our partners, right? So DDC, for example, and, and Copant uh, is the company uh, that uh, helps us with the, the solution set training. That's, that's another good question from Jessica. Uh, what best practices do you think that are, uh, are unique to urban tech or you have noticed you do differently than other startup communities? What has worked out well or bad? Um, yeah, well, I, especially the, the, the bad thing we shouldn't uh, ignore, right? What, what, what doesn't work? That's a good question. Uh, the, uh, if we start at the positive side, uh, what, 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 what's been good? And maybe we talk about what, what, what can be difficult. Um, what is good, uh, I think, uh, based on, on my experience of working with startups over the years, having been part of them, having been in a corporate supporting startups and having uh, support startups in incubator and in lots of different settings and so on is uh, some accelerators end up being uh, quite school bench focused uh, and there's a time and a place for that for early stage startups but as uh, startups get to the point where they uh, are growing in maturity and becoming market ready then uh, they need a more customized approach uh, this is my experience and, and really they need to meet with reality right it's not enough just to get feedback from a trainer they actually need to meet with the chief exec uh, from a potential major customer who can basically tell them uh, whether they uh, they have a chance of of, uh, of doing something or not um, and, and that's basically what we provide right so so what's unique about us is the fact that we we have um, uh, the chief executives of these organizations in our steering group uh, and they're not afraid to express their opinion. And that 
hopscotch yourself straight onto what, what's difficult. Well, that can sometimes be a little bit difficult uh, because they, they definitely have some, uh, some strong uh, constructive views on, on uh, what, what can be done uh, both better and differently or more differently. I'm, I'm connecting that last question with uh, one from my side. So what other ecosystem best practices uh, would you like to know? That, that of course, can help to, to increase urban tech performance. So that's a question back to to me. What we would okay. like to know? Yeah, yeah. I think we, we would would love to know um, uh, and look forward to in the, in the future editions of this uh, webinar series, right? To to explore um, basically, um, especially the the element around how uh, do you help engineers, for example, who are really deep into a technology, um, really open up uh, and and make that transition from. Uh, um, uh, what's it called pure engineering thinking into commercial thinking. Uh, I reckon that we've, we've done reasonably well on that, but we can always learn more. That's for sure. And the other thing that we are always looking for are, are stories that inspire, right? Um, stories of, of uh, people who will come uh, significant challenges, um, uh, especially through collaboration. Um, and then that comes down to the, the best practice elements, right? What, what, what are the uh, tools that people use uh, that have worked particularly well, uh, especially as we are making an adaptation into a world where uh, it might have been about post-it notes and getting together in a conference room previously, and now it's it's probably a little bit more uh, digital tools combined with hopefully uh, a return to to a more uh, interpersonal uh, uh, element. Okay. I think that people uh, would like to know more about uh, your engagement process with corporates and startups. So uh, how do you start? So do you start with uh, corporates, partners to define their needs and then go look for startups and with solutions or it's the other way around? No, that's exactly it. So we, 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 we need to start with basically a very good and in-depth understanding of, of, of the, the large organization and what their basically uh, issues are what they're trying to address, uh, also what their risk appetite is, right? And, and basically as they look at the, the landscape, what, what are the kind of things that might be, uh, uh, they might be looking for? They might be looking for a startup that can complement uh, a service that they offer. They might be looking for a startup that can disrupt a service that they offer. They're, they're very different uh, ways of thinking about it. They might also be looking for, for ways that can, um, they can uh, basically uh, pressure them to innovate internally as well. Uh, that's an, an important element. So there are multiple different uh, ways of, of thinking about it, lots of different motivations and so on. But a good match ultimately comes down to, to that in-depth understanding of, of the large organization um, and both their needs and their desires because sometimes the needs and desires are not the same. Yeah. Uh, I think that we have one last Question, so do you think in the new normal post-COVID world and given the world going remote and digital, will there be a mass semi-urban migration? Yeah, so, so I guess the, to make sure I understand the question, um, it is that will, will we see people basically move back out of cities um, following yes. all of this? That is a super interesting question. I think we, we live in an age that definitely is throwing up some uh, unexpected challenges. I don't think uh, anybody was expecting uh, to see um, uh, the price of oil actually going into the negative. Uh, it was only brief, um, uh, but uh, nevertheless, it, it's something that hasn't happened before. Um, uh, I find that um, uh, making predictions is hard and uh, making predictions of the, the future, th th those are the ones that are the most difficult ones. Uh, so I'm, I, I will hesitate a little bit on that. Um, we are set uh, at the moment to uh, basically uh, see a migration from the countryside into cities around the world uh, where basically cities become the dominant uh, place. Uh, could this uh, slow that or maybe even uh, turn it around? Um, yes, it, it, it might. Um, would, would it uh, call for radical innovation uh, either way? Uh, it definitely would. Um, so uh, whichever comes next, uh, I think um, uh, one thing that won't go away is, is, uh, is a need to uh, basically make the built environment, the cities and the places where we, we, we meet and, and whatever else, even if we do it at a distance, they, they, they need all the help they can get to become more sustainable. 
Um, so I want to close with the fact that, that uh, 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 places shape people and, and people shape places. And, and there's an important part to pay for, for all of us in that. Karen is asking if you could see deploying this process at Urban Tech in developing countries. What do you think? Yeah, I don't see uh, why not. Um, we, uh, we welcome applications from around the world. Uh, but could you potentially run basically an urban tech uh, Addis Ababa uh, or could you run an urban tech uh, Kathmandu? Uh, yes, uh, why not? Why not? Uh, you know, they, uh, wherever there's a built environment uh, uh, with uh, basically a critical mass, uh, I think there are uh, things that can be, be done um, using technology from startups to, to address uh, basically th some of the challenges that are at scale. Good. I think that we don't have more questions, uh, Michael. So I think it, it was a good bunch of questions and many of them were quite interesting. Any, any, anything that you would like to add as part of this webinar that you would like to highlight related the maybe the deadline of urban tech and next steps or whatever you think it's, it's important for urban tech efforts? Sure. No, I just want to uh, draw people's uh, very briefly uh, their attention to uh, well, obviously, the, 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 the following webinars in this series, I look forward to, to attending them and, and learning more from others. Uh, it's great to have an opportunity to, to share um, and also to highlight the fact that uh, uh, it might be me speaking today, but there's a whole team out there uh, working extremely hard, uh, Corinna and uh, Tandine and Hannah and Gauline and a whole uh, team in the building. Uh, normally, uh, you can see on this slide here, uh, which is in the harbour in Copenhagen. And if you are ever in, in Copenhagen, please do come and, and see us. Um, and uh, if you do have a startup that fits uh, what we're looking for, um, then uh, Sunday uh, midnight is uh, the deadline. Uh, that's midnight Copenhagen time. And you can find the application uh, link basically on our website. So if you basically just go search for Urban Tech, we should come up uh, at the top. The other thing that I would uh, invite you to do is to have a look at our insights page. So we have a blog where we share uh, insights around the built environment, uh, a set of Q and A's with the industry players in the ecosystem and so on. And in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Oscar, there might be one coming up uh, with you soon as well. So it's an opportunity to, to revisit there. Yes. So that's it and, and that's that. Thanks, thanks a lot, Michael. It was great pleasure having you here with us today. Um, I think it was really, really interesting, this webinar. And I think that it, it is also okay for you if we can make this presentation available for everyone. Uh, we can. So we will, we will spread it out. Uh, uh, yeah, so let's be in touch. Uh, we are planning more uh, webinars like this, trying to, to share with everyone all the ecosystem best practices coming from different uh, ecosystems around the world with different maturity levels. Uh, uh, so yeah, so let's, let's do more. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks everybody. Thank you.